The likelihood of a tropical disturbance developing in the Caribbean is steadily increasing, and today's video will break down everything you need to know with clear insight and expert analysis. Happy Wednesday everyone, and welcome back. Hopefully, your October 16th is off to a solid start we are now officially at the halfway point of the month. Even though we are closing in on the final weeks of hurricane season, we still have active tropical energy brewing, and this developing system demands our attention. In fact, I genuinely believe that once this potential threat plays out, the tropics may finally begin to calm down, allowing us to transition toward winter weather patterns with lake effect snow, chances not too far away once we enter November. We're close, but not there just yet. The tropics are still alive, and we must continue monitoring them carefully. We will also briefly touch on a storm system, moving across the lower 48 this week, which is expected to produce severe weather. But today's main focus will be the growing tropical threat forming in the Caribbean Sea. And if you haven't already, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you never miss critical weather updates and expert data interpretations. Let's jump straight in and make this as clear and efficient as possible. This is the latest run of the GFS model, and right away you can see a concerning feature emerging in the Caribbean. Moving through the Bahamas as a hurricane-like system by the end of the forecast loop, now does this guarantee the exact scenario will unfold as shown here? Not necessarily model runs or guidance. Not gospel but it does align with a growing consensus among increasing model data. I've been warning for weeks now that the Caribbean is a ticking time bomb, loaded with late-season tropical fuel, and it looks like it may finally ignite into a significant system. But let me be crystal clear nothing is guaranteed yet. The encouraging news is that we still have time, a named storm likely wouldn't form for at least 7 to 10 days. Taking a look at the latest satellite imagery, Tropical Storm Lorenzo is still alive but struggling, and forecasts show it dissipating in the coming days. However, the real energy we're tracking lies farther south the healthy tropical wave emerging off the coast of Africa near the Cape Verde Islands. If this wave survives the harsh mid-Atlantic development region, it could strengthen dramatically once it reaches the warm Caribbean waters, where conditions will be far more favorable right now. The National Hurricane Center hasn't tagged this system yet, and they likely won't for another day or two, simply because it currently sits outside the seven-day development window. But once it draws closer to the Caribbean, development chances will rise significantly, and this will become a system of interest. Now let's dig into the model data. The next name on the Atlantic hurricane list is Melissa, and if this disturbance organizes into a tropical storm or hurricane, that would be its name quite possibly the final named storm of the season. Here's the key. Time frame highlighted in pink on your screen. October 17th, 2025. As we move through this weekend, the disturbance begins entering the Caribbean tapping into deep tropical moisture and low wind shear, and by next Wednesday, the GFS has already begun closing off a tropical low just south of Hispaniola signal we simply cannot ignore. The disturbance gradually organizes into a defined low-level circulation, transforming from a broad, disjointed area of spin into a more compact and structured tropical system. It initially intensifies into a tropical storm, but conditions quickly become favorable for rapid strengthening. According to the current model projection, it wastes no time climbing to hurricane status and could even reach major hurricane intensity as it approaches regions near Hispaniola, Jamaica, and Cuba within the next 10 days. Now, naturally when you see model output like that, the alarm bells start ringing but the big question is this, do the other forecast models agree, or are we still dealing with significant uncertainty? Let's break it down. Dot here is the icon model. You can clearly see the tropical disturbance pushing westward toward the lesser ant. After crossing the islands, Icon begins to strengthen the system into a tropical storm within five to six days, by this upcoming Monday. From there, it continues intensifying south of Hispaniola, similar to what the GFS projected showing organized development and pressure drops, signaling deepening convection and a maturing cyclone. Though this model only goes out one week, it already confirms growing support for tropical development. Next up, the Canadian CMC model. This one actually develops the system even earlier than the others organizing it into a tropical storm as it crosses the central Antilles by Sunday into Monday just four to five days away. It then strengthens further once it reaches the Caribbean, showing a well-defined tropical storm south of Hispaniola a week from now, tracking in nearly the same corridor as the GFS solution. So now we officially have multimodal agreement always an early red flag when it comes to tropical formation potential. So the next logical question becomes what about the European model, known as the most reliable global model, is old reliable on board? Surprisingly yes but cautiously. The ECMWF also tracks this tropical wave into the Caribbean by late weekend. However, development is delayed compared to other models. It keeps the disturbance disorganized for several days due to environmental resistance. But after day 10 the Euro finally develops it into a large and messy but strengthening storm, pushing it toward Cuba and eventually the Bahamas before lifting it near the southeast U.S. coastline well beyond the 10-day mark. 
While it's slower, it still confirms development is likely which is exactly what matters right now. So why are so many models suddenly signaling development? Environmental conditions are becoming an ideal breeding ground. First off moist, looking at precipitable water anomalies. There's an expansive surge of deep tropical moisture across the Caribbean next week exactly. What a tropical cyclone needs to thrive. We are not seeing disruptive dry air from the Saharan air layer intruding up. Green light for development. Second dash ocean heat content is off the charts. I've been warning about this all month. The Caribbean is loaded with record warm waters and deep thermal energy, a fuel source powerful enough to support explosive intensification if a storm organizes in the right environment. Anything that finds itself in this region has the potential to strengthen rapidly. Now the final mystery piece of the puzzle is wind shear. Will upper level winds allow this system to stack vertically and strengthen or tear it apart? Right now, shear forecasts 7 to 10 days out are still uncertain. But here's what matters. When you combine high moisture plus massive ocean heat content, even moderate wind shear may not be enough to prevent significant development. This is why confidence is increasing that a tropical storm or even a hurricane will likely form in the Western Caribbean next week. Now let's move forward and analyze ensemble data to see how much support exists across multiple model members. Then we'll review the official forecast outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. At first glance, the European ensembles don't look overwhelmingly aggressive, but there is undeniably a clear developing signal emerging. What stands out is that the Central and Western Caribbean continue to be the focal point for potential tropical formation, not the Eastern Caribbean, that aligns with the current environmental setup we've been tracking. Now let's turn to the GFS ensembles, which have been far more enthusiastic about this system. A strong majority around 60 to 70 percent of ensemble members support tropical development, and many of those runs intensify it into a well-organized and potentially powerful system. Toward the end of the 10-day window, a noticeable cluster of solutions begins pulling the storm northward indicating increased steering influence from broader atmospheric patterns. There are two key differences between the GFS and the European model. Timing. The GFS develops the system much faster. Tracked. The GFS begins pulling it north earlier, suggesting earlier interaction with mid-latitude steering currents however. We must address the elephant in the room GFS bias. Historically, the GFS has a known tendency to spin up tropical systems too quickly in the Caribbean, often jumping ahead of reality. So is this just another GFS fantasy storm? At first, you might think so but this time there's a major difference. Multiple models agree, and even the more conservative European model confirms the threat just with slower timing. So perhaps the real evolution lies between both solutions, slower to organize but still highly likely to develop. Next, we look at the AI-based guidance, which extends even farther out in time. Just like the European solution, it delays development. But here's the important part. Numerous AI members still strengthen this into a hurricane in the 10 to 13 day time frame tracking it deeper into the Western Caribbean, not the East. That westward clustering tells us the same story we're seeing in traditional model guidance the environment favors development in that region. Finally, let's bring in official backing. The Climate Prediction Center just released its Global Tropics Hazards Outlook, and they are now explicitly highlighting this threat area. A 40 to 60 percent chance of tropical cyclone formation has been issued for the Western Caribbean, exactly where we've been tracking this disturbance for weeks. So it's not just model hype. Any more official agencies are now acknowledging the growing risk. The National Hurricane Center hasn't tagged it yet, but based on current trends, it's likely only a matter of a day or two before they do. The good news for those who are ready to say goodbye to hurricane season is that after we passed Halloween, no new tropical development is expected according to long-range guidance. If this system does develop, we may still be tracking it into early November, but once it's done, the season finally shuts down. Shifting back to us weather back here at home across the lower 48, we're tracking a dynamic weather pattern. A mid-latitude cyclone has been churning over California, producing rare severe thunderstorms over Los Angeles just yesterday something we don't see very often this time of year. That same storm system is now lifting toward Las Vegas, sending a plume of Pacific moisture and upper-level energy eastward as this disturbance moves inland. It's delivering high-elevation snowfall across portions of the Sierra Nevada and northern Rockies while valleys and lower terrain see periods of cold rain across Idaho. See you tomorrow.